Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV against my most hated enemy in the game. Well, besides cockroaches, but other than that, these guys are number two. You are seeing why? Haha! <laughs> but anyway, there is an easy way of dealing with these guys. Put them all to sleep! And then we should be just fine. Actually, I should have the flame sword, though, because the blood bats are actually weak to fire. The cave bats are only weak to holy, though, but we don't have that. Fortunately, most bats are also weak to projectile weapons, which is one of the big reasons why I like uh, equipping Edge with the boomerang there, because, well, it makes his, all, it makes his entire attack uh, well, throw elemental. And that can be pretty nice. Not to mention, he's pretty brittle there. I mean, well, let's take a look at his stats real quick there. Yeah, he's at level 25, and I have done very, very minimal grinding up to this point. So, yeah. Okay, well, let's get back on the ice equipment, because we're done with the fire equipment. You could sell it if you really wanted to. Game! Uh, not again. Let's try an easier way of dealing with these guys. Edge, work your magic. Let's try the flame ability that we gave to Edge. Probably could have used that in the last episode, but oh well. I'm not going to switch my weapons for this one game. There we go. It's kind of like Ifrit, but eh, maybe not quite as powerful. I mean, it does cost half as much, but it's pretty nice. Not to mention, not too many enemies in the next area are weak to fire. Although that would explain how Edge got this far, even though he's so weak. How do we get in here? It's a dead end! What do we do now? Oh, we just saunter our way through. I like how in the original Super Nintendo version, Edge kind of just charges right through, like really fast, like a ninja. Here it's just like, oh, we'll just casually walk through the wall. Oh, wow. Well. But here we got some new enemies, Ghost Knights. We want to get to Rydia's turn if we can. There we go. Now one thing you could do against the Ghost Knights is if you held on to that, what was it called? The Mithril Knight from earlier. You could equip that on Edge in addition to his boomerang there. And I think he'd be able to one-shot these guys because well, they're considered undead type enemies. Now I am intentionally allowing the sorcerer to live. Okay, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. But I did that on purpose because I wanted to see if he would summon a green dragon, which is a pretty rare enemy around here. Not ultra rare, but rare enough. So whenever you see a sorcerer, keep on doing that. You can mini the mad ogres, which is why I have Rosa in the center position there. Because really, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be using Toad as much, or at least the enemies who I can Toad are not as threatening as the ones that I can mini there. So, remember, do that against the Mad Ogres there. That should be good enough. And, well, we met up with these guys before, but uh, let's jump one of them. And let's show off what happens if you attack them and you don't kill them. Okay, that wasn't a good idea. Edge? Where are you? There you go. Okay, here we go. They use Blaster, and... Okay, it just paralyzed you. But that can also kill you if you're unlucky. So, don't do that. You gotta know who, which enemies can counterattack and which ones can't. Just like my side LP. And here, let's see. If this is who I think it is. Wakey, wakey. Yeah, it's a Lamia. Let's get Kane in the air there first. Cecil, let's see what happens when we attack her without killing her in one shot. Nuts. Yeah, she can confuse you. And that will help you. Yeah, kick her ass, Kane. Literally. Yeah, Lamias have no elemental weakness. And against those corals, you can piggy them, too, to prevent them from counterattacking like that. Wow, lots of new enemies today. Oh, there's a treasure over there.
Uh-oh, it's a green dragon! Holy crap! Uh, hold, hold, hold! Hurry, hurry! Get hold of- Or you could just kill him. Okay, never mind. Didn't expect that to be a green dragon. I forgot they could be, uh, in eggs. That's like the ultra rare formation. The more common way you meet up with them is being summoned by those sorcerers there, but... Well, at least I don't have to go out of my way to find them now. Yeah, this tower is pretty straightforward. Well, I suppose most of the dungeons in this game are. Okay, we're at full health. What the? Nuts. Okay, now for this battle, uh, we want to get to Cecil's turn there. I actually want to use the Blood Sword on him. The reason is because it can exploit the giant creature type. So, yeah, look at that damage. Usually, you don't want to use that. It's not a very good weapon. You want to get mini on them. By the way, if you actually do run into those uh, green dragons or those, any of those golems that we've met up with before, uh, you can, Edge will eventually learn an ability called Shadow Bind or Pin, which is basically the same thing as the whole spell. And the ladies really can't do a whole lot because uh, Mad Ogres are practically immune to magic. Although, if you did have those silencing arrows from earlier, uh, Mad Ogres are oddly considered a mage-type enemy for some reason. I don't know where that comes from, but they are. But the more common way to exploit them is just to exploit the giant type. And now we got the Ogre Killer to do that for us. It's even stronger than the Ice Brand. You could give the Ogre Killer to Kane, but nah. Oh, we didn't take any damage. Right, they were mini the whole time. Why did I think they might? And by the way, if you didn't notice from those Ghost Knights earlier, I forgot to mention, they will counter physical attacks with Bio, and they'll counter magical attacks with Reflect. Yeah, lots of counter attacks to worry about in this area. You can't just go all out with DPS and healing and expect everything to work out. Yeah, not too much in the way of elemental weaknesses you can exploit in this area. Left path is just a dead end, so let's head this way instead. So yeah, you remember those two elevators? Or, wait a minute. No, I'm thinking of something else. Never mind. Pay no attention to this old fool. And in this chest we get the Asura Blade for Edge there, so a little better than the Dancing Dagger. You can sell the Dancing Dagger now, finally. Uh, gotten a lot of mileage out of that. Uh, okay, so Edge's strength is 37. You see the attack multiplier is 6 there? Let's equip the Rune Armlet there. He loses one point of attack power, but who cares? Uh, he needs the magic defense, and it gives him another magic defense multiplier. The way magic defense multipliers work is... It's equal to the sum of your intellect and spirit divided by 32. And here's the other two enemies that we haven't met up with yet. Uh, balloon! They can actually drop the bomb summon in the game. The ordinary bombs and gray bombs cannot. I don't know how that works. You got me on that one, viewers. It's not a bug or anything. They just don't have it in their drop table. So, yeah, I, I don't know. And the last one back there, Storm Anima. Uh, you could uh, use Toad on them or put them to sleep with the Sleep Blade, but... I figured just bio them. They've got enough HP to warrant uh, single targeting bio on them. Not that hard in this game, though. In the next game, yeah, they're pretty hard. Let's see, we got a save point right in there. But I don't want to use that just yet. I'll come back there later. Let's clear out the last of the treasure in here. Gee, I wonder if the big symmetrical room is where we're supposed to go. And in this chest, we get 82,000 gil. So, now, we've done everything we... Oh, I can't even warp here? Okay, well, never mind. I'm going to go back to the save point, rest up, and then we'll see what's in that giant room there. Can we defeat Rubicante and take back the crystals? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy IV! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.